All right guys, today we are going to be talking about six knives that you won't need to replace if you buy for bushcrafting. Now, before we jump into it, I wanna say kind of what I mean by you won't need to replace. As I kind of did a video earlier, kind of talking about end goal knives, knives that you can buy and be pretty much content with for you know learning and growing in bushcrafting. This is kind of similar in that regard where these are knives that you can buy and are reasonably accessible, like monetarily speaking, reasonably accessible, except for maybe the end two knives, the most expensive ones. And these are the types of knives that you can get and you will that you can get and grow with so essentially what i mean by that is when it comes to bushcrafting you know when you first start and maybe your style varies throughout the entirety of your practice but I, I noticed with a lot of people myself included um, with bushcrafting you know you might start out in woodcraft and get a knife that is particularly good at skinning game animals maybe filleting fish uh, you know you can do some kinds of outdoor activities but it's not particularly good so as you grow, grow and gain skill in bushcrafting and you know wilderness loving as a whole you then start to you know create things like tri sticks to build up your experience creating different notches for building structures and and then you you know grow and want to have a knife that is more capable for different more crafting aspects and so these are the types of knives that you can buy that will not only do those more baseline tasks things like processing game animals but also help you with carving whittling and more fine toothed tasks now to be fair these are also knives that you could potentially run as complementary knives so if you want to run a larger big you know survival knife something like a cold steel srk or a ontario um, RTAC 2, something like this that's, you know, obviously not going to be what you want to fillet a fish with, but these are knives that you can do those smaller tasks with and those more fine tooth tasks. So as a whole, these are going to be that type of knife that you can learn, you can grow, you can start off maybe doing larger survival tasks with, and then also shrink it down to doing more fine tasks as well. So the first one up and one that I really want to ha have on this list because I want to show that the barrier to entry isn't insane. Sometimes when we see these knives, like the Survive Knives GSO 5.1, we look at it and it's like, you know, that's uh, it's pretty expensive, pretty unattainable. So if I say like, you know, your end goal should be the Survive GSO 5.1, right? That may not necessarily be the most realistic thing. Or even a Bark River Knives Bushcraft or maybe out of the wheelhouse of some people. Um, you know, I want to show you guys that there are knives that are very attainable reasonably cheap and can be got so the first one up is of course the mora robust now the reason why this one is on the list is that once again broadly speaking for the most part when you get more skilled more practiced and you want to focus on more small tasks things like i said like crafting making notches and doing that kind of thing you don't want huge unwieldy knives now i'll tell you why the gso is slightly kind of bends this rule but for the most part most of these are going to be smaller knives that you can do fine tooth tasks with but also still have a reasonably thick blade so that you can step up baton them use them in harder applications and they won't fail so the more robust is i think the kind of pinnacle for this at a budget cost it's a thick blade you will have to do some modification to the spine to make it strike ferro rods unlike any of the others on this list that out of box are able to strike ferro rods this one is not so you will have to modify the spine but outside of that you have a rubberized handle that is super grippy and comfortable and most importantly is going to be reasonably temperature neutral and you also are left with a wide and long scandinavian grind that is going to be very sharp and is going to serve you well so i think this is a really good value proposition overall and once again for the price that you'll pay for these it's about 15 bucks this is not unattainable for anyone so you might have like i said a more traditional hunting knife you might have a k-bar you might have a fillet knife right now but if you're wanting to specialize into bushcrafting and more specific tasks going with something like a robust is a knife that you can grow with now, next one up in stepping up the price to about $50, $60 is going to be the Mora Garberg. Now, the Garberg is essentially the robust 
It's just built up. This is going to be a longer blade, same steel, DLC coated for extra rust prevention. And I think the only thing that this knife doesn't have that the Robust has over it is the rubberized handle. This does not have a rubberized handle, which kind of, in my opinion, is crummy. But outside of that, everything else is there. A very sharp Scandinavian grind that's going to perform very similarly to the Robust. Once again, you do have a sharpened spine for striking ferro rods. Now, stepping it up even further and going closer to that $100 range, staying just under $100, around $89 to $90, is going to be the Cold Steel Master Hunter in CPM 3V. Now, I think that this one has made a lot of lists, and once again, I'm not affiliated with Cold Steel. They don't pay me for this stuff. I bought this knife on my own, but I think that this knife offers a really incredible value proposition because once again, you know, we're looking at a $60 knife. This is a, an $89 near $90 knife, but this is CPM 3V. So this is a powdered metal steel. And of course we'll see more powdered metal steel, but for the price point, sub $100 powdered metal steel that is going to once again, do a lot of the tasks that you need it to do. Um, it's a reasonably compact size. This is really going to be something that I think has an incredible value proposition. It's something that you can learn and grow with and will continue to serve you well. Once again, it is also a fully rubberized handle, which I love to see. Next one up is, of course, the Topps Fieldcraft. This is a staple in Topps line. Now, this one is about $120 to $140, depending where you look. This one is, once again, going back to $1095, just like the first two that we looked at. But this one is differentially heat treated, so it's a little bit better, a little bit more shock resistant, but still, you're not really getting like better edge retention per se. So it's a little bit less of a value option as opposed to the Mora, sorry, uh, Cold Steel master hunter but it is still a decent knife worth talking about and i've honestly put mine through hell so it is worth um, you know its weight now another thing i did to this one because this definitely does not look like a stock um, tops field craft is i did blue the exposed steel to one give it a better or cooler look and then of course really help with corrosion resistance so the same reason this is a dlc coating the same reason i blued the steel on my field craft all right, returning back to the steel CPM 3V, we have one of my personal favorite, all-time favorite bushcrafting knives. This is the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter. Now this is the just a normal one, not the lightweight. This one's like I said in CPM 3V. Now you can get this knife in other options, such as other steels, other thicknesses, but I really do love the 5 seconds of an inch thick. I think it's about like the perfect thickness for a knife and you can get it in other steels, which is cool, but I really do like CPM 3V. So overall, this guy's a little bit smaller. This is the smallest knife up on the list, I think outside of maybe the Robust. Okay, the Robust is a little smaller, but uh, this one's not huge at all. But once again, I found that this is kind of like a Goldilocks knife where it's not too big, but it's not too small either. All right, last one up is going to be the Survive Knives GSO. So I've kind of modified my recommendation when it comes to the GSO family and the Survive family as a whole. I really do like this knife. I think this is a fantastic blade, but if you guys know Survive, you know that they have a serious issue with order fulfillment. So I do not recommend ordering any Survive Knives from Survive themselves, but if you're a part of any like groups uh, fan pages of Survive Knives, you will see these guys come up for sale. And of course, on eBay, you will also see them come up for sale. Sometimes for reasonable prices, sometimes not. So use your discretion, but if you can get a Survive GSO, something like a 5.1 or a 4.1 are going to be more optimal. But what I like about them, even with these larger blade stocks, is that you can really choke up on that blade, as you guys can see there. And when you're able to do that, you usually are able, for the most part, most people are able to do your more fine-tuned, once again, carving, notching um, with that very end portion of the blade. So you can really choke up on it, get a good grip, get a sure grip, and do a lot of your smaller, more fine-tuned tasks with the back of your blade while still leaving you a larger blade to do more expeditious tasks with. So while the Survive isn't necessarily an absolute top pick, it is more capable than you might initially suspect. So anyways, guys, this has been a look at 
six knives that I think are knives that regardless to your price point, regardless to how much money you can afford to put into wilderness survival or wilderness living as a whole, these are all going to be knives that offer an incredible value for, for the most part, for what you can get, and ultimately knives that you can continue to use and progress your skills with. These are knives that will teach you how to be a survivalist as much as you are learning it yourself. So I think these are all solid picks. I would take any of them, have taken them already into the field. Many of them, not all of them, but many of them. Um, and so, yeah, anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.